when the printing press was bombed. And it was bombed, if you remember well, a few days after our former friend, Jonathan Moyo. Jonathan Moyo. You remember that yes. Jonathan Moyo was our was our star columnist. He contributed to the success of our financial gazette. Yeah. And we became such so close that I took Jonathan Moyo to my village in Nyazura one weekend. And we spent a day there by the bottle store. And you will not believe it. People were coming, greeting Jonathan Moyo and me. They would go into the bottle store and come out with two pints, some with two coats. <laughs> by the end of the day, the fridge was full of our, we eventually had to give them away. But I'm trying to make a point mm. here about how we became close because Jonathan was a, a, a crucial writer for, for us. But he did in about 10 somewhere. I don't know what happened. By the time we met again, Trevor, when I was editor of the Daily News, he brooked no nonsense. And nonsense by his definition. If you write a negative story about the government when he's Minister of Information, that amounts to nonsense. So, a couple of days before the end of January 2001, he issued a damning threat that he was going to deal with the daily news. Right? Now, maybe this was coincidence, coincidence. happenstance, mm -hmm. but two days later, indeed, our printing press went up in smoke. But we can't accuse people on supposition without evidence, evidence. right? Mm. But uh, that this was a, an operation mounted by government or people within government is without mm. doubt. <laughs>